In this episode of ayahuascapodcast.com, we talk about mushroom microdosing specifically for mothers. We talk about uh, stigma that's attached to mothers or parents working with psychedelics or entheogens. Uh, we talk about cultural shift that's uh, needed for this not to be the case. And we also talk about uh, using mushrooms to quit antidepressants and so, so much more. It's a great episode. I'm sure you will enjoy it. Uh, remember to leave us a review, whatever you're listening to this podcast, and leave us a like or share it with a friend. The world deserves to know uh, we're going through a mental health crisis and those plant medicines can really help. And this episode is sponsored by La Waira Ayahuasca Retreat. Hi guys and welcome to ayahuascapodcast.com. As always with you, the host, Sam Believe. Today we're going to have a guest, Tracy T. Tracy is um, from Chief of Honor of Moms on Mushrooms, where she talks about everything regarding microdosing for moms and, and so much more. I'm very excited for this episode. Tracy, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, Tracy, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what made you work with microdosing with mushrooms and specifically with moms. Thank you. Yeah. Um, well, um, I am a mom. I have a 13 year old daughter. I live in Denver, Colorado. I've been married for almost 22 years. Um, and I am a late in life psychonaut. I came to mushrooms in my mid forties after um, losing a business that actually was also working with moms. I actually had a live comedy show that um, was a comedy show for mothers about laughing about all the things we have in common as moms. So I've been in the mom world for ever since I've been a mom actually professionally. Um, and when I started working with this medicine to not only heal some grief, but continue my own spiritual journey. What became abundantly clear was that this, I believe this medicine has presented itself um, on the planet in this time in history. Um, not, not specifically for moms, but for moms for sure. Um, because it's such a gentle, heart opening reconnector. And I believe that the mental health of mothers, especially modern Western mothers is in a, a place where it's not sustainable. Um, we are in a critical period and moms are deeply unhappy, deeply over medicated, um, deeply depressed, and we're raising children. And we are, we are at a critical point of how we take care of the generations that we're raising. And I think this medicine is here to help. So for me, um, microdosing felt like the, the perfect step to bring moms back together and to reinstill that sense of community that I think our modern Western culture is really missing. Um, mushrooms require that of, of, of the people. Um, it is a web. They want, it wants to be taken and worked with in community. And I also believe that microdosing specifically for moms, especially in the West, in the U S where I'm living, um, we aren't, we don't have a culture that, that has any sense of appreciation for ceremony or sacredness. Um, and any kind of connection, you know, continuous connection to nature that's not like a novel, oh, look at me, I'm going to take a picture of myself out in the forest type thing, but a true connection to ceremony and what it means to actually sacredly heal. Um, so I believe that microdosing first allows a mother to understand what entheogenic medicine feels like in her body and create a relationship for it. Because what my concern is, is as this psychedelic renaissance continues to grow, the enthusiasm makes people go out and seek out the largest, biggest, strongest, most expansive journey they can find. And that can actually be incredibly destabilizing. So this is a way to gently introduce the medicine to mothers so that you can go and pursue a large dose journey and feel safe and empowered and actually have a relationship with the medicine. And that's what Moms on Mushrooms is about. It's beautiful. I'm, um, I'm really identifying with many things you say, you know, the fact that you work with mothers and humor. I think we're too serious these days and uh, the healing will come from playfulness and you probably know mushrooms uh, mushrooms do that a lot and you know serving moms as well it's a very 
sort of unserved uh, population. And, and I love you being on that quest about spreading information because, yeah, the world deserves to know that uh, it's a medicine and that psychedelics can be extremely helpful. I want to I want to tell you about my personal story and why I was so uh, compelled to interview is uh, so I have a wife. We started uh, Lawira together, which is an ayahuasca retreat. And uh, of course, when you uh, we have two kids and she's pregnant again now with the third one. So I, I, I completely agree with your your task. And when after our, after our second son was born, she was acting very strange. She was um, being negative about lots of things. And I asked myself, you know, everything she talks about, it's actually pretty good. The situation was pretty good. So I didn't understand why she was negative. So, of course, uh, because I already worked in this field a little bit, I, I thought, okay, maybe she's depressed. And then I remembered about listening to podcast, I believe, as well, something about postpartum depression. And it all came together. So I went to the freezer where I had some mushrooms. I, I, did, I took a microdose and I gave it to her. And I, she, she accepted it, obviously, because we work in this field. And about a few weeks later, she started to feel better. And uh, it, was, it was pretty clear. Of course, as you, as you say in, 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 your, in your content, post-depression doesn't just go away immediately. But it really eased her pain and, and it got much better. So, um, you know... Talk, talk to us a little bit about why microdosing is so perfect for moms specifically. And maybe if you know, tell us a little bit about postpartum depression. Sure. You know, microdosing, well, first of all, okay, if we reframe, all right, how do we start with this? If we look at a mother in distress or a mother who is depressed or a mother who is um, in need of help, okay, mental health help however that looks. Our traditional models are, you know, traditional psychology, which is go into an office, sit down, talk about the thing, maybe talk about it some more. And then eventually, truly, the common thing is, well, you're unhappy or you're sad. So we're going to make you unsad or less sad with this pill. And what happens is that nothing is actually healed. Nothing is cleared out from the body or from the heart. And the mom is in put inside a loop where she is in both, both ways. If she's going to therapy, oftentimes um, re-traumatizing herself by talking over and over about the thing that's bothering her with no resolve. And then uh, at the same time is having a numbed out experience where she's not actually connected to her deep emotions and isn't, uh, and isn't her body isn't chemically allowing her emotions to come to the surface to release the trauma of which she speaks. So that is a very, very generalization of, of like the mental health of mothers and how moms traditionally go in and seek out mental health help. Microdosing um, is the exact opposite. Microdosing is a real like punch in the throat, frankly, of medicine that comes, that brings all of your feelings up to the surface. And I believe it connects your heart and your mind and your body so that all three things are speaking to each other and hearing each other, which means when you're, which I believe that microdosing, it helps you feel and become more embodied. So you're feeling aches and pains and fatigue and overwhelm in your body more acutely. And your brain is finally hearing your body tell your brain, you need to slow down. You're not okay. This is something that needs to be addressed. And at the same time, microdosing allows those feelings to come up or those problems and you stare at it, it stares at you. And you recognize it and you acknowledge it for what it is. And then I believe that the medicine can just sort of like, from that acknowledgement point, sort of like turns into butterflies and flies away and it doesn't go back down inside you. And so it's a very gentle way to actually fully, holistically heal something that is bothering a mother. On top of that, Large dose journeys are amazing, as you well know, and ayahuasca is amazing, but moms don't necessarily have the time it takes to devote to a truly integrated, like purposeful preparation period and then going into doing a large dose journey. And then a lot of times moms don't have the time to integrate afterwards. 
our healing is done in between school and making snacks and wiping butts and giving baths and driving to doctor's appointments. We don't have long spans of hours in a day or over a weekend to devote to ourselves. And that, I'm not saying that sarcastically. I wish we did. But when you take on the role of a parent, that is your number one priority is raising tiny humans. So weaving in psychedelic medicine is absolutely possible, but it just takes a different approach than what is traditionally presented out in the psychedelic space. And microdosing is just a gentler, slower, smaller way to heal incrementally in a, in a time frame that actually works for a mother because you're not high. And you can do those things. You can heal on the you know, car ride back from school. You have some space there and the medicine is working with you. So that's, um, that's really why I think this is so important and potent for mothers. Um, in terms of postpartum, you know, there's actually so little research, actual research done about postpartum depression, what is triggering it and what actually will help it. What we've done is we've just taken a medication model, which is she looks like she's unhappy or in distress, so we're just going to give her an antidepressant. And there's no exit strategy and there's no actual support that comes in and holds the mother where she's at. I mean, your story about seeing your wife, feeling concern, offering some medicine and saying, like, I know that something's wrong and, you know, holding her to help is the right way. And sometimes... We just need that community to come around a mom who, whose body and hormones are in massively rewiring you know, patterns and hold space for her, nourish her, give her food, give her rest, give her the help she needs. And then let's take a look at like her hormones and her deeper mental health. And I think that microdosing can really help support that because it's not going to interfere with anything else. Um, and it's going to allow her to feel her grief and her pain if she's experiencing that postpartum while releasing it so that it doesn't stick with her for years to come. That's a great explanation. Um, I think you spoke about it on, on the other interview you did, but <clears throat> can you tell us about why, you know, moms, especially soon after birth, why, why, why is it such a priority for them to, to feel good? I just think that that is programming that we've um, accepted over many generations. Um, I think culturally there is little tolerance for a woman who is hysterical, right? Um, hysteria, we used to, that's what, you know, menses used to be called, you know, your hysterical period. And traditionally, in a patriarchal society, we don't like women who are sad. We don't like women who are angry. We don't like women who are um, depressed, um, who are grieving. And there has been this just expectation of when a woman has a baby that she has about six weeks to bounce back and fix everything. And that's like your grace period. But even then you're, you know, a lot of women go back to work even before that time, or you're, you've got other kids at home that you're raising and you're just expected to get over this monumental thing that you just went through and carry on as if nothing happened. And the truth is again, going back to just research and understanding female physiology, we don't really even address the massive physical changes that happen to a woman when she gives birth. And we definitely don't, from an allopathic way, say, okay, here's your, here's your course back to care after you had a baby. We're going we're gonna to monitor your hormones. We're going to monitor your blood sugar levels. We're going to monitor your adrenals and we're going to give you supplements and we're going to give you the support and nutritional aspect you need so that you're rebalanced. Um, none of that happens and it just leads to hysterical women. And, and we just don't have a society right now that con it concerns itself over an unhappy mother. Yeah, hopefully that improves. And, and especially when the baby is just born, if a mother is depressed, then, then the baby will have attachment uh, issues. And then you, you, it keeps going. Let's say if a baby is a girl, then it keeps going for a generation. It just keeps accumulating. And we need something to sort of, to sort of break that pattern. Uh, Tracy, why did you choose mushrooms specifically for helping mothers? 
Um, well, I would just say mushrooms chose me. <laughs> I, uh, I didn't really have much say in the matter, honestly, as I look back on the path of my life. Um, mushrooms just came into play. It's something I've always loved. I've always loved plants um, and have studied herbology and herbal medicine for years, decades. Um, and mushrooms would always come up and I've always been fascinated by the healing um, like powers of ma magic mushrooms. But again, as a mom, I just was like, well, there's that, none of that is for me. And actually, to be perfectly honest, I was mostly interested in ayahuasca when I started to research psychedelic medicine. And then for some reason, the mushrooms just came in hot and just sort of showed up in my front door one day. And the minute I worked with mushrooms for the first time, it's like a, a grand knowing, just a light bulb went on inside my soul. And I just knew, I just knew that they were my master teacher. Um, I always joke, I was one journey kind of early on, I was um, with my mentor and I was on the floor, of course, like weeping. And I looked up at her and I said, I think I'm just put on this earth to eat mushrooms. <laughs> and that's just kind of how I feel. I just think they're just, they were just presented as my master plan teacher. Yeah, I really identify with that because people ask me like, how did you end up doing this? And I was like, well, all I did was the work direction was set by something else. And just as, as in your journey, just synchronicities happen and you, you get guided. So I think I do believe that uh, certain people uh, have uh, are put on this path because the, the world kind of needs it. And um, so so you mentioned that you were. I mean, I'm a I'm a big fan of mushrooms and ayahuasca as well. Uh, but obviously, we ended up working with ayahuasca also for for legal reasons because in Colombia, ayahuasca is uh, legal and mushrooms are sort of in a gray zone. But both medicines are very beautiful, and um, I believe that combining to not together in the same ceremony, but let's say in between yeah. your ayahuasca retreats, because it's hard, you know, to to go and do that mushrooms can reconnect you to that state and and it's a it's a it's a beautiful combination you know it's like a ayahuasca is a grandmother and mushrooms are grandchildren and it's a, it's a family in the end of yeah. the day so you said you felt calling for ayahuasca first and then um uh obviously it's difficult for a mother to you know get get out of life and and dedicate uh, long term, long, long time for ayahuasca. So, did you end up uh, doing ayahuasca in the future, or and or or not? No, I haven't done it yet. I think one thing that I've been, you know, that I've learned is I, I and I always say that I'm like raised by medicine women in this path. Mm -hmm. My path is very much the the slow medicine, um, medicine woman way. So those are my mentors, and. Um, even though I'm a type A, triple Aries manifesting generator mm -hmm. um, who likes to get stuff done really fast, I know that my teacher for ayahuasca will present itself themselves mm -hmm. when it, and the time will open itself up. And I wanted to speak to that, especially for ayahuasca, because I, you know, I've obviously have hundreds of conversations with women who have done it, who want to do it. Um, but I also, and it is a little bit more of a time um, constraint for for people and for mothers. But I think as this as this space grows and as we raise awareness around using entheomedicines medicines for healing, entheogenic medicines for healing, um, my prayer is that as a culture we start to make room for each other to go and do these things without judgment and with support. So that when someone says, when a girlfriend says, or a, a wife says to her husband, I'm feeling called to do ayahuasca, the husband knows because this is the shift in our culture. Yes. All right. Let's make this happen for you. And not, uh, oh my God, uh, you know, and it's so much money and it's this and it's that, but like, you feel it. This is important to you. It's important for me. Let's do it. And I really hope that that changes over time. But yeah, as, as far as the relationship between mushrooms and ayahuasca, you're right. And also, I don't think we talk a lot about in the space that I really believe that microdosing is such a beautiful way to integrate after a mm -hmm. large dose journey. So you have that ayahuasca experience and then you can come home and you can microdose with the mushrooms and stay with the grandmother and really learn and integrate those lessons. I think a lot easier and more gently um, with the help of a low dose of another medicine. Definitely. Yeah. Ayahuasca and mushrooms is a, is a match made in heaven. Yeah. And, uh, I love what you say about the cultural shift because my, my personal dream is, uh, and partially why I'm doing this podcast right now is to go from a point of 
what is ayahuasca to the point of to the conversation starter where when's the last time you did ayahuasca and hopefully yeah hopefully we get there and what you talk about stigma is definitely true you know when you if people think that ayahuasca or mushrooms is a, is a schedule one uh, drug and then obviously a mother doing ayahuasca or mushrooms is very stigmatized we, we definitely need to to change that you know what tracy um uh, you know how synchronicities happen and uh, you get calling for ayahuasca. I consider sometimes myself to be the messenger for that call. So I would like to use that chance to extend an invitation for you to come to the retreat, uh, totally free of charge. So when you're ready and maybe we'll do next episode in person and, and after you finally do your ayahuasca experience. So, and I definitely, mm. because I am a father myself, and um, my 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 wife, she she works with ayahuasca. Obviously, there are certain traditional ceremonial rules and how and when and which month and stuff like that. But I do, we do welcome uh, mothers when they want to come with children. Obviously, the problem is who's going to take care of the child. So in that case, what we normally do, we ask a couple to come together and bring a kid with them. Mm. Then they, they have a private accommodation. And what they do is one day the husband drinks, another day the wife drinks. And, and in between, they take care of the, of the, of the child together. And this, this seems to be working. I think it's, it's a good solution for those who do, who do want to, to try ayahuasca. So Tracy, mm -hmm. Mm. I know, for example, in a tradition here in Colombia uh, with ayahuasca, women are allowed to drink on certain months of pregnancy. It also comes with uh, postpartum. Um, what about mushrooms? When is it safe to take mushrooms uh, in a microdose form? Can pregnant women take mushrooms? Can women that are breastfeeding take mushrooms? What is your take on that? Well, obviously the jury is out from a scientific standpoint. There is not enough research. Um, I, I, I don't have a take because I'm not a doctor, but I will say that um, <laughs> in terms of toxicity, and this is what I've spoken to with scientists, is if you are taking an SSRI while you're pregnant and they're not concerned about it crossing the blood-brain barrier, you can assume that psilocybin will act in a similar manner. Um, and so I, that is a really very basic but simple analogy that makes sense to me. Um, I also believe that if you are in distress and you are having a hard time with your pregnancy and it is actually compromising how you are growing that baby and showing up as a mother with the baby in your belly, then, and if mushrooms feel like the answer, I think that a woman, a mother's intuition, if you're actually listening to it, may not be wrong. Um, and then I look back at traditional cultures, like you're saying. Um, I look back at what the original peoples have done for centuries um, around pregnancy and especially postpartum and breastfeeding. Um, and I've and I and I look at the stories of the medicine women who have done it and how their children and even grandchildren have turned out and and how wonderful and almost magical they are. So I I kind of just take an agnostic view and I I don't take an agnostic view. I take a intuition view. I think that answer is between you and God. And I think that if it feels like the right thing, I think you probably are um, called to do it. Mm -hmm. Tracy, I can imagine you work with hundreds, if not thousands of mothers. For the, for the mothers that might be listening to this episode, you know, what kind of results can, uh, can they expect to, to get? You know, what, what are success stories you maybe want to share? Um, yeah, thank you. And I also just want to say to that point, um, a friend of mine, uh, Michaela De La Maico, um, has almost dedicated her life to this discussion of mushrooms and motherhood in utero and in breastfeeding. And she's a great resource. Um, she's working on a project called Mothers of the Mushroom, and she's written papers about it and has a beautiful community. And I encourage anyone listening to this to look up, um, I think her handle is Mama De La Maico on Instagram, and she's a great resource. So I always also defer to her. Um, but for me, the women who come to us, and we really kind of specialize in women postpartum, and we've had 
women go through our courses as early as four weeks postpartum and, and breastfeeding. So it's very common in our community. Um, I think the number one, the number one thing that women come to moms on mushrooms for is to get off one, if not several medications. They feel like they're on a treadmill of, um, antidepressants, ADHD medication, um, sleep medications, and they don't know how to get off that treadmill. Um, and so their soul is seeking a simpler, gentler way. The second thing that women usually come to us is just simple presence. They have a desire to be present with their children. Um, I think collectively we're feeling the overwhelm of this technological culture of being connected to our phones, our computers, and the distractions that are happening. And our attention spans are shortening, which makes it actually physically and mentally more difficult to like hang out with a two-year-old <laughs> because we're not, we're so used to being distracted and moving on to the next thing. And, and kids actually move quite slow, right? When they get into something, they want to stay there for quite a long time. And um, that's not where we're at. So women really find that microdosing helps them drop in. It helps soften the go, go, go and those charged edges and really just find joy in the simple presence of just hanging out with your kid. And then the third thing is reactivity, which kind of goes with it. Just, you know, very, I don't think any mom likes yelling at her kids, right? We know we have abusive parents in the world and that's its own thing. But generally speaking, most mothers really just want to be the best moms they can. And the shame that's associated when you don't show up as the best can put you into a spiral and Women really just want to be gentler with their children. They don't want to be as triggered by their kids. They don't want to yell at their kids. They want to find a language of commonality. And the ones who work and really work to create an intentional microdosing practice through our program or someone else's find that the medicine is really supportive and just making you the mother that you want to be. And so it really, at the end, has nothing to do with you and everything to do with you, but so much to do. It's really a lot of women in Moms on Mushrooms just are doing it for their kids. Uh, I just had a uh, question and it's a little selfish. What about the fathers? Should they take my food? Um, uh, okay, well, first of all, Dads on Mushrooms is coming. So that is definitely on our list. Um, I think, I think, I think if I say over and over that mothers are in distress and the mental health of mothers is concerning, I think we have the same issue with fathers. Um, and I think the men who are wanting to step up in this day and age and really show up for their families and for their partners um, have very little support. I think there's actually much more support female woman to woman, female to female right now than there is man to man and certainly father to father. We're seeing a rise of like younger generations of men who are young and maybe considering starting a family and single who are working with this medicine and finding great healing, but just good old fashioned dads who just want to do right by their family. There's not a lot. So we're hoping to come and fill that gap. But um, I think, you know, the family that microdoses together probably stays together because you are going to be connected on a deeper heart level. And it just makes those hard conversations, which happen in every relationship, easier to alchemize. And one thing that I think I always find myself so grateful to Mushrooms for is, is the lessons that I am always learning. So before if something went wrong, I think I would slip into more of a victimhood or bitter and just angry that I'm, um, that I'm you know, uh, that my schedule is messed up or that I'm just irritated. And now if something bad happens, whether that's a car accident or a death in the family or, or money or any number of things, life things, I find myself moving towards the lessons and finding gratitude in that moment because I feel myself growing. And that is for sure from the medicine. So when a couple does that together, when a father can do that, um, gosh, magic. Beautiful. Uh, as you say, if they mic if they microdose together, they probably stay together. I say the same thing. The couples that drink together, and I'm talking about ayahuasca, stay together. Mm -hmm. Because if, uh, let's say, a mom starts microdosing, she will slowly also start growing spiritually and mentally, and eventually she might feel herself a bit um, separate from her husband because she he wasn't growing so it, it should be done together i get right now all sorts of ideas coming about how to organize 
moms and dads uh, ayahuasca retreat. So we will talk about it later. Maybe mm. we can maybe we can partner up. Um, I know you. I saw some videos of you like going on the news, talking about microdosing and stuff. Like that. How does it get received? Do you get uh, ridiculed? Do, do people listen? What's the reaction when you talk about those topics? You know, I have to say of all the news I've been so fortunate to have discussions about or go on, um, I would say 99.5% of all the responses have been overwhelmingly positive. We really don't get a lot of negative feedback. Um, I credit that to my relationship with God, um, the prayers I said before I started this company, um, before I accepted this mission really is probably a better way to say it. Um, and I think it also is a credit to our culture, to our society right now, who is hungry for change. And when someone speaks and, and relates to a normal mom or dad, however that looks, and you feel like those words might be yours, there just isn't a lot of reason to ridicule. And, and anything that we have gotten that's negative has, has truly just been from a place of misinformation. It's just people who have bought into the misinformation that our government, governments collectively has siphoned to the public for 50, 60, 2000 years. And, uh, and they've just decided to believe it. So it's coming from a place of, of ignorance and fear. And it's just hard to get upset about that because it's just, you just don't know the facts. But um, I'm really lucky uh, to to have a lot of support kind of wherever I go. Yeah, I think the society is getting more and more ready to receive this message and um, and understand that, you know, maybe desperate enough with the with the mental health crisis that's uh, that is going on. Uh, Tracy, I'm curious, um, you know, let's say somebody who listens to this episode, they they uh, they like your message and they want to learn about uh, your program. Can you can you talk about them? How does it look like? What more or less you know? Mm -hmm. Sum up what is the what does the program look like? Sure. Yeah, we have kind of three buckets. Um, our first one is our private community membership. So I have a beautiful portal with thousands of mothers that's completely off social media. Um, and we have a private membership. It's only $2 and 22 cents a month. So ridiculously affordable. And it's literally like Facebook for moms on shrooms. And um, that is the place where we invite mothers who are seasoned psychonauts and have been working with entheogenic medicine forever and have never really felt like they had a community or mothers who are curious but still maybe terrified just want to learn more but don't want to google ayahuasca or psilocybin or follow a hashtag which we know is a terrible idea they can come and just learn from each other and it's just a constant conversation of mothers talking about their own experiences with this medicine, along with tons and tons of resources um, for women to, for mothers to empower themselves. Um, so that's like the first bucket. The second bucket are our longer courses. We have um, a three and a half month, like get started microdosing course. That's really for the mom when she's ready. We believe it takes about three months to feel that medicine working in your body, to unlearn some of the things that you believe, not only about psychedelics, but about how medicine works, you know, un unlearn the allopathic role and, and allow yourself to go through a few cycles of feelings. And we, those are held in containers of 10 women or less. So they're super intimate. Um, and you're really supported from day one, um, as you create an intentional practice, because the truth is, is that in the end of the day, microdosing is like not really rocket science. It's the intention behind it and the and the why behind why anyone does works with plant medicine is the important thing. And it's actually a lot harder to establish than you might think. And then we have um, we have eight week courses that come out throughout the year that are like shorter and kind of condensed and focused around a central theme. So, for example, right now I'm about to launch one in mid February that's called Motherhood, Microdosing and Magnetism. And it's all about unblocking the throat chakra. Um, so we roll those out a few times a year. And then we have just some really great basic 101 courses. We have microdosing 101 for moms and macrodosing 101 for moms. And that is just uh, the how, the why, the what the heck is this all through the lens of a mom 
and how she would want to en enjoy that information. And those are kind of instant downloads. You can read it on the airplane in the middle of the night while you're breastfeeding. Um, easy course, packed full of information and resources. And that's really just my mission, like I said earlier, is just to educate and empower women. And I think we have to learn about this medicine before we start working with it um, so that we have a full 360 degree relationship with it. So that's really what we do. Uh, Tracy, um, interesting question. For, I'm very curious. You know, you, you, do, you not only do microdosing, you also do macrodosing. Can you share maybe the, the most uh, profound experience or most um, crazy experience you've had on mushrooms? Oh, gosh. <sighs> There's so many. Um, gosh, oh, I'm like, which one do I tell? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll share a short story. Um, I went to an Airbnb in the mountains of Colorado because I was writing and I just needed to get away. And I brought medicine with me, you know, just as like, well, maybe I'll do it, but I, I wasn't really planning on it. And that morning I had gotten up, I had made a really nice breakfast and I was just hanging out in the kitchen by myself. And I'm not one who kind of feels her guides come in outside of the medicine space very frequently, but it was like my ever my entire galactic team just showed up at the breakfast table and they were like, um, you're doing medicine today. You won't be writing. You're taking the medicine. And um, I was just like, yeah, no way. There's no way. I don't have the time. I've got to go home tomorrow. I have all these things to do. And the messages were just so insistent. Like this, it's, this is what you're doing. You need to walk the walk. You need to get clear on some things. And I remember like in the kitchen, I said out loud, I go, well, I just had breakfast. <laughs> and um they didn't seem to care. And so I, I, I heeded the call and that was one of the first times I had done the medicine kind of unguided and done it by myself and, uh, poured it into, um, put some mushrooms into some cacao and went on a walk and ended up going out into the forest in January in Colorado and like bundled up and essentially laid on the cold, hard ground surrounded by snow and had like my first official sort of initiation. And it was during that journey where I was really asked, are you ready to follow this path? Like truly, are you ready to serve like you say you are? And it was this massive, um, massive questioning and uh, initiation is the best word where I really had to get honest with myself about, is this, is this what I want to do probably for the rest of my life? And I will tell you that I wasn't sure for quite a while, felt like hours. I cried, I asked questions, I cursed. And then I finally said yes. And um, the minute I said yes, it was like I was transported through this portal. And, um, and so many lessons from that day have come out to play over the past um, year. And it was really beautiful. So um, there's more to say about that, but that's like a two hour podcast interview so that's uh that sounds very familiar it's really hard to explain a psychedelic experience with the um, human words you know they're, they're just not enough um when you said you lie, lay down on the on the on the, on the ground uh, it reminded me of an experience i had about six months ago obviously when when we work with ayahuasca i personally drink ayahuasca once a month but sometimes i can't for mm. reasons of business and there was this uh, rough period I was going through emotionally in between two retreats. So I thought I'm going to go get a microdose and I didn't really measure it. I think I ended up taking like a gram. L oh. Luckily, it's not. Uh, and I'm very sensitive to all the medicines, including ayahuasca. Uh, luckily. Me too. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm so sensitive. <laughs> maybe maybe people who are on that mission are extra sensitive because um, medicines know like we need to get into it. So. And I've also felt a desire to lie on the ground, luckily so here in uh, Colombia. It's always uh, warm, and it was on the grass, not on the snow, and I was just, yeah, just rolling around and crying and, you know, just releasing emotions. It was it was really nice, very very difficult, but also I felt really nice. So, yeah, it's a, you know, there's a billion other things that's happening, but that's that's the kind of description you can give. Um, yeah. I, so, as, as you know, we work with ayahuasca, um exclusively we're not allowed to um, serve mushrooms uh, here in colombia at least for now 
but uh, I do oftentimes uh, when people want to come to do ayahuasca, they they need to stop taking antidepressants. And a lot of times I recommend them to use mushrooms and microdosing to help with that. Obviously, I'm no expert on mushrooms, and I know a lot of a lot of mothers might also be on antidepressants and other medications. So, would you? Of, and of course, not a medical advice, just from point of view of uh, personal experience. What What do you think? Could it Could it be a, a good um, way of doing it? Yeah, we've seen a lot of women have a lot of success um, on following a very strict and methodical titration protocol. Um, and I absolutely recommend that there's some amazing pharmacologists out there that have, um, you know, uh, Ben Malcolm, the spirit pharmacist, Emily Culpa, who are who have dedicated their path to the intersection of pharmaceuticals and psychedelics. And so I recommend anyone who wants to titrate down to consult with someone like that, unless you're you know, God willing, your doctor actually understands it and work on a slow titration um, protocol to take yourself off because it can be very destabilizing to just quit SSRIs cold turkey. Um, and microdosing can kind of swoop in and fill in those spaces um, to make the side effects a lot less. And we've seen that time and time again, where you're not necessarily feeling some of the larger, more profound effects of microdosing because an SSRI can typically blunt the effects of psilocybin. Um, but it really is coming in as like this nice, cozy, cuddly little helper as you titrate off and um, still allowing and in, in like in real time, allowing you to rewire your neural pathways as your body detoxes from the SSRIs. So I think it, I think it can be done well and i and we have seen great results i just think it has to be done carefully and um you know you have to have some patience it's not like i want to start microdosing and i want to stop my zoloft and i want to do it this week it doesn't work like that and as you know and i know all of this medicine is slow and so giving yourself time and that's why our foundational course is three and a half months because it does take time um, especially if you've been on an ssri for a long time you're going to feel really different and it's going to be very unfamiliar territory to you when you when you titrate off, and that's where microdosing can come in and support for sure. Thank you, Tracy. Well, um, it's been a great episode. I know you're a busy mom and you have to run. So um, before we finish, uh, any last um, recommendations for people? And uh, where can people find you? And moms that are listening, where can they sign up for your program? Thank you. You can just go to momsonmushrooms.com. All of our information is there. Um, I have a love-hate relationship with social, but if you want to follow us on Instagram, we're at momsonmushroomsofficial. But I really encourage every mother who's listening to join The Grow, which is our private community membership, $2.22 a month. Just come in and join our community and relearn what it feels like to just talk to other moms without an expert at the helm. There's no, it's certainly not me. There's no guru or, or the, some right or dogmatic way to do things. It's just conversations. And I believe that's what the medicine is asking. Um, and in terms of advice, I would just say to anyone who's thinking about working with any plant medicine, know your why, get real clear on why you want to do it. Um, it may be something that you just want to experience, but if you're feeling like you're feeling pressured from friends or family who have had these transformational experiences, if you feel like you're at your last rope and this, you know this is the only thing that's going to fix you, I would just sit a moment longer and really understand your why and get clear. And then after you know your why, ask yourself, am I actually ready to change? Because the whether it's mushrooms or ayahuasca or aboga or peyote or any number of entheogens, you will be asked to change the things about yourself that are no longer working. And if you're not willing to do that, you can drink all the ayahuasca on the planet and it's never going to, it's never going to help. So just be ready, be ready for change. And if it takes crying on a forest floor for five hours to do it, so be it. Um, but change is the big changes the big equation thank you tracy and uh hopefully that's not not the last episode we do and in the next one we'll talk about mothers on ayahuasca yes, uh, absolutely i would love to uh, guys thank you for listening and i will see you in the next episode
Guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you like our podcast and would like to support us and Psychedelic Revolution at large, please follow us and leave a like whenever you're listening to this podcast. Nothing in this podcast is medical advice. It's intended for educational purposes only. Trae nai nai con la vida, vida de la baila, cura con la guaira, limpia, limpia.